Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I am Subhash Chandran. In this video, we are going to discuss about some of the design doubts that we generally experience in piping design. So, I believe that this video will help you to clarify those doubts and to prepare the perfect piping design package. So, without wasting time, let's get started. So, the first doubt that frequently comes in our mind is how to provide supports for slope lines. This is because the comparison between the line being straight and the line being sloped. So let me tell you, the providing supports for slope lines is exactly similar to the providing supports for the straight lines. So here the major change is the height of the supports is fabricated in such a way that it will be suited for the slope lines. So basically if you take pipe shoe as an example, in a straight line, the top profile and the bottom profile of the uh, shoe supports will be straight. I mean horizontally straight. But in sloped lines, the top profile of the shoe support will be sloped in such a way to match with the sloped lines. This is how the sloped lines are supported. So, uh, these types of supports are typical for all types of uh, sloped lines actually. So, you don't have to uh, think that uh, the providing support is too complicated in slope lines. It is exactly similar to providing the supports in the straight lines. These will be taken care of during the construction and fabrication as long as you provide the right type of supports for the lines actually. And if you want to learn about uh, pipe supports, I have launched one course in the Udemy platform. You can go and check and uh, find this course uh, by typing my name. If you type Subhash Chandran, you will be able to get this uh, course. This is one of the best course that will uh, give you a knowledge about how to provide support, how to select supports and all actually. So this will be a very useful course for all piping design engineers actually or candidates who wanted to become a piping design uh, engineer. So now let's move on to the second point. Second point is how to get the size of instruments which are identified in PNI and where to get it actually. Let me tell you. Uh, in most PNIDs, there will be uh, size mentioned for these instruments. If sizes are not mentioned, we have to get it from the instrument data sheet or we can approach the instrumentation team. In some companies, these are named as control and automation team and other companies, they are known as instrumentation team. You can approach them in order to give know the sizes actually. Generally, instrument sizes are finalized after uh, getting the vendor uh, information. So, uh, if you don't find these informations at the very initial stage of the uh, engineering, you don't have to worry about it. But in some cases, the uh, connections such as uh, pressure indicators and temperature indicator indicators, those sizes are already defined in your pipe specification. Pipe specification is known as either it can be called as a pipe spec or piping class or PMS actually, where you will find the, the minimum sizes of instruments in the piping spec itself. So what kind of fittings you have to use, those details will be available actually. So you don't have to confuse yourself for that. If you do not know the size, either you can approach the instrumentation team or you can refer the piping class or piping material specification for details actually. Now let's move on to the third point. The third point is, why do we place PSV always on the top of the top tire? Or we can say, why do we place PSV above the flat header? That is exactly because the, the downstream of the PSV piping uh, should have the free draining facility. In order to get the free draining, you have to place the PSV above the flat header. Otherwise, the free draining, uh, I mean the free draining will not be happen actually. So, you have to have this provision, you have to provide the PSV above the uh, flat header in order to get this facility. So, it is as simple as that. Uh, if you want to install the PSV, you have to install this PSV above the flat header in your process plan. So now let's go to the fourth point. The fourth point is the space between lines. So when I talk about the space between lines, it's basically I'm talking about the gap between two lines or gap between adjacent lines. So we know the thumb rule. Thumb rule is what actually? From the OD of the bigger size pipe to the OD of the nearby line, we should have at least 25 mm of uh, space, which is roughly about 1 inch. Please understand this 1 inch is the minimum requirement. It can go to any uh, increase in length, any increase in gap based on the 
the type of the line which is adjacent to it. In case of the high temperature lines, you have to consider the thermal expansion. So how do we consider this? Either you can check with the stress engineer or you can check with your senior engineer or basically you can use this thumb rule as if the temperature goes beyond 150, you have to keep minimum of 100 mm, which is basically 4 inch actually. If your temperature is lesser than 150, then you can play between 1 inch to 4 inch. But if your uh, the temperature goes beyond, um, I mean 150 degrees Celsius, I mean the temperature of the adjacent lines, then you have to keep more than 4 inch or you can uh, keep minimum 4 inch so that you can safeguard your piping. My recommendation is that in such scenarios, we should always check with the stress engineer output because they will be able to assess the thermal movement just practically just by a glance so that they will give you at least some approximate figure so that you will not make blunder in your design. So better approach the stress engineers or approach your senior engineers or if you have uh, no other person to do it actually you need to uh, a minimum of uh, uh, 4 inch needs to be maintained or 100 mm I can say. Now let's go to the fifth point actually. The fifth point is how much space should I need to maintain between equipments? It could be any type of equipment, small equipments, bigger equipments, rotary equipments or uh, uh, pressure vessels or any type of equipment. How much space you should maintain between equipments? It is basically highly depends upon the accessibility and the maintenance space. Uh, let's give you this example. The free accessible space between any equipment the free accessible space is for the operators to move around should be at least should be, be 950 mm. Let me remind you this is 950 should be the free accessible space which should not have any uh, hindrance of the supports or any piping should be should not be uh, crossing this walkway. We can say this is an clear accessible space without any hindrance actually. So this should be your uh, the I mean the thumb rule while placing an equipment. So you can ask me actually is 950 mm is adequate enough for placing uh, I mean for maintaining the space between two equipments. I am not talking about that actually. See in order to maintain the space between two equipments there are various factors. Basically the size of the equipment, how do you remove the motors, how do you uh, remove the pressure vessels, uh, where do we place the equipment what kind of uh, uh, equipments are this but what i'm talking about is the clear accessible space should be of 950 mm then the rest of the factors should uh, be placed actually so the first factor that you have to consider is the 950 mm clear accessible space after that you can consider the other factors such as what is the foundation size and what is the uh, i mean if there is anything to be uh, any additional space uh, needs to be provided for uh, I mean uh, any seed plants or any kind of motor removal or any kind of maintenance activity you have to consider that in addition to 950 mm. 950 mm should be the clear accessible space. Now let's move on to the uh, sixth one. The sixth one is about the generic point which is vents and drains. Where do we provide, where should we provide the vents and where should we provide the drains basically. So let me tell you drains should be placed at all low points and vents should be placed at all high points. We know this philosophy uh, in general in piping design. However, you have to keep this in mind that vent should also be provided wherever you have an intermediate pocket. Say for an example, you are running a straight line and you have a pocket like an upward loop. You also have to provide a vent over there because if the line continuously runs in case of air traveling within the piping which will be locked over here in the pocket so you will not find any provision uh, to remove this air in order to remove these stacks of air we have to provide the bend see basically in bending <coughs> we have hydrogas vents and as well as commissioning vents commissioning vents are uh, used only during the commissioning stage or during the operation stage generally during operation stage all vents or all drains will be closed there will not be no leaks basically but during the commissioning stage in case of air trapped i mean to remove the air trapped within the piping they must use these vents otherwise if they will not be able to flow the line within the piping because these air will uh, allow i mean will block the flow or within the piping so you have to provide this 
type of um, additional vents wherever you have an upward pocket or wherever you have an intermediate um, I mean top points basically but when it comes to drains you have to consider in all low points you have to provide a drain or in addition to the low points if the operation wants or the process condition recommends to provide a valve I mean drains uh, in most cases uh, in, uh, in the control stations we uh, could see that at the uh, upstream of the control station we could see the drains are provided so those cases you have to consider other than that based on routing if you want if you find any low points you have to provide a drain actually so i hope this is clear now let's go to the seventh point the seventh point is where do i place my first support in the line in any line so here you have to keep this in your mind that the extended can deliver portion of piping should not be more than two meter that is because the two meter of piping will yield sagging more than four mm actually so generally in uh, piping design the sagging at sustained condition more than 5 mm is not acceptable so i prefer keep one and a half meter as an extended cantilever unsupported uh, pipeline so based on this factor you can consider if your line starts from any time point you have to provide a support as near as possible to the uh, tie-in point in such a way that it should not exceed more than one and a half meter so this is how we have to pl uh, plan accordingly because the support we are generally providing in order to minimize the loads transferring to the uh, the connected tie-in points see uh, we also have to consider about the safety of the line if you provide a support far away the whole load goes to the another tie-in point so that may damage the piping or any welding joints so please consider this any extended or any unsupported pipes should not be more than one and a half meter because two meter will yield four mm you can provide a support at two meter that's no, that's okay perfectly okay but in order to have the safer design keep this at somewhere around one and a half meter okay so now let's move on to the eighth point the eighth point is can i place valves in vertical piping absolutely you can place valves in vertical piping except the check valve i mean the swing type check valve because swing type check valve uh, will have the internal plate it has to swing according to the flow if you place that in vertical piping the swing will not happen actually so except a uh, swing type check valves all other valves can be placed in vertically okay here i forgot to mention about one thing which is about the control valve because control valve also cannot be installed in the vertical piping so except check valve which is of swing tap and the control valves you can install all of the valves in the vertical piping that is because control valves are considered to be most uh, critical valves which needs proper supporting in uh, if you install the control valves in the vertical piping the weight of the actuator will uh, produce an eccentric load that will disturb the the overall dynamics of the piping system so it is better to not to install the control valve in the vertical piping so please avoid these two categories of valves to be installed in the vertical piping all of the valves you can install in the vertical piping okay now we will move on to the next point so now let's go to the ninth point the ninth point is uh, shall i weld cs and ss pipe together absolutely you can weld cs and ss pipe together because generally these happens at very occasional scenarios say for an example in rf pads where the pipes will have uh, the stainless steel pipe and the support will be at the carbon steel so you have to weld these two actually so these kind of scenarios are generally used there is no issue in welding uh, cs and uh, ss uh, materials because when uh, the welders do this action actually they choose a typical i mean the the very special type of an electrode which will be compatible for these types of welding so you don't have to worry about that in design basically but try to minimize those kind of scenarios because that means a lot of quality procedures during the construction so try to minimize it so that is what i would say but it is very much possible now let's go to the 10th point the 10th point is what is the actual minimum distance required between any weld to weld so this is the key generally we keep this as 100 mm wherever if you see in piping design 100 mm we keep we maintain it just because for the safer side but what is the actual minimum weld because at some cases we may not be able to meet 100 mm so how much i should maintain see according to the uh, welding requirements that should be at least five times of the thickness so if your thickness is 5 mm it should be 25 mm so if your thickness is 10 mm it should be um, 50 mm if your thickness is 100 mm accordingly you have to keep the weld to weld so basically the minimum 
actual distance between any well to well should be of five times of the thickness. Please keep this in mind. So, but I would always prefer to keep 100 mm as minimum. Only if it is not possible to maintain 100 mm, you can go for the five times of the thickness because that is the rare case actually. The generic design is to maintain 100 mm. So, I hope that these 10 dogs will help you to prepare your piping design effortlessly. I will meet you in another fantastic video. Until then, bye from Subhash Chandra.